tiny nation of Cuba seems caught in a 1950s time warp. Tens of thousands of classic cars roam the island, nation's roads, and highways. Pontiacs, Dodges, Buicks, and more, all with big chrome buffers and colorful curves galore. One little boy already dreams of the day his family's 1954 Chevy will be his. All the Way to Havana, written by Margarita Ingall, illustrated by Mike Curato. We have a gift and we have a cake, and today we're going to drive all the way to the big city to see my new baby cousin on his zero year birthday. Mio, vamos! Some of this island's old cars purr like kittens, but ours is so tired that she just chatters like a busy chicken. Car, 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 quack, quack, quack. Today, Cara Cara sounds like a tiny baby chick. Pio, 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 pssst. Papa opens the trunk and lets me hand him the heavy toolbox. Try me la caja de herramientas. Then he raises the hood to show me all the rattling parts that have been fixed with wire, tape, and mixed up scraps of dented metal. He listens to each tapping taka taka noise that Kara Kara makes as together we struggle to fix all the grunts, squeals, and grumbling. Clunk clunks, that should be busy, cluck cluck clucks. I choose a wrench and a bolt and a belt. No luck, but we keep trying and trying. Even though all the silly noises are still a mystery unsolved. We don't give up, we experiment, we invent. A twist here, a tightening there, move this, hold that. Cuidado. Until finally, after discouraging minutes that feel like endless hours, Cara Cara once again begins to sound like a chattering pen. The road is bumpy and our noisy car ends up so crowded with friendly neighbors who need a ride that I feel like we're traveling in a barrel of elbows and knees. But we have a gift and we have a cake and we're driving to my new baby cousin's zero zero birthday. So we purr cara cara and we glide taka taka and we zoom zoom. Zoom! Cluck, cluck, cluck. Beside farms, forests, beaches, and forts, toward the curved road by the seawall, where Mama points out noisy old cars of every color. Yellow, pink, purple, green, orange, and even a bright red car with huge fins like a lurking shark. I'm glad that Cara Cara is peacefully blue, like the clear sky above and the wide sea beyond. Some of the noisy old cars around us have torn seats, shattered windows, and cracked mirrors. Many of the cars roar, growl, whine, or hunt, hunt. But most just honk, honk, honk as they glide. Bumpity bump. On hot, old city streets. Where people lean over crumbling balconies as laundry dances and a sea breeze sings.
When we finally reach Tia's house, I hug Abuelo and everyone smiles as we admire the funny baby boy who is too little to know how to open a gift. Or play with the box and the ribbon or build a teetering mango and pineapple tower. After lunch, cake, music, and a happy birthday fiesta, I need a quiet siesta. But when I wake up, I discover that it's already time to start driving home. So we zoom and bump all the way back to our little village, where we will soon have a chance to kara kara, taka taka, pio pio clunk, sleep. The next morning, we have to work under the hood once again, never giving up, never losing hope. I'm eager to help Papa guess which tool is best. When he asks me which city trip car I liked most, the answer is easy, our car. This noisy blue one with its ragged seats and cloudy windows because Cara Cara already belonged to our family on the day when Abuelo, my old grandpa, celebrated his zero-year birthday. Someday, Abuelo's car will be yours, Papa promises, making me feel as proud and powerful as the bold eagle that makes Cara Cara's sky blue hood look so brave.